Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. This is Dr. James Hansen, one of my climate change heroes. In fact, uh, I play chess. When Kasparov was world champion, he was head and shoulders above all the other top grandmasters. When Bobby Fischer um, reigned in the 70s, especially after the um, Rechevich match in 72, the Fischer-Spassky match, Fischer was head and shoulders above everybody else. And I think this is where James Hansen is. Climate change is a matter of life and death. There's the argument for this is getting stronger and stronger. And anybody that impedes any politician, any country, any, any government, any company that impedes progress on climate change is basically messing with the ability of the earth to sustain life. And that includes human life. I don't believe that because of the abrupt climate change that we're undergoing that we can lose uh, any time, let alone four years, for example, um, if we have denial of climate change uh, in the US government. So what I'm gonna do is give an overall update of why this is such an emergency based on a paper from a few months ago by Jim Hansen and a whole bunch of great, uh, a whole bunch of uh, authors. So this is uh, <clears throat> my website, uh, paulbeckwith.net. And I was at, in Paris at COP22. So this was just over a year ago when I managed to meet my climate hero here. Um, of course, you know, you can tell like he's being interviewed and I just went in the picture and, you know, did a uh, selfie. No, actually, I think I got somebody to shoot this picture. So he doesn't even know I'm here. You know, I acknowledge that, but I had to post this. Um, and I did talk to him after um, and he gave a talk, in fact, at the beginning of the conference, which um, uh, which uh, was, is, is also shown here, posted here. Um, so if you just Google um, Paul Beckwith, James Hansen, and my website, you can find this post. It's from a year ago, like I said, just, and this is another picture where, um, you know, there's a bunch of us, a bunch of journalists, myself, were asking him uh, questions. This is, you know, um, he was one of the first climate scientists to testify in the 80, late 80s, I believe, to Congress about the serious threats of climate change. So this is when he had hair, and now he covers it up. I mean, this is his trademark. This replaced, you know, some people have wigs. James Hansen has this hat, which you can see me often wearing as well, even though I still have hair. I think if you wear hats and you have hair, it causes the hair to fall out or something like that. I think hair needs sunlight like uh, phytoplankton. So these are various images of, you know, Jim Hansen um, through time being arrested, um, being arrested here in protesting some pipelines, um, speaking, um, hmm, I don't know who put this there. Albert is a smart guy, but he's pretty, you know, he's full of, uh, full of, full of, full of the, the brown stuff himself um, with this post. Um, I'm trying to find a particular post here, um, which escapes me at the moment. Um, but anyway, you can, if you just go Google, Google images, just type in James Hansen and you get all kinds of stuff here. Um, you know, look at this, you know, Australian denier stuff here, I'm sure. So anyway, um, let's get right into the talk. Okay, so this I believe came out in September and young people's burden, requirement of negative CO2 emissions. So it's not good enough just to, we have to slash fossil fuel emissions, but that won't get us where we need to be. We also have to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. 
As great as James is, he hasn't come around to the realization that we also have to cool the Arctic. We have to do all of these thing, things, um, not just you know the two that he's coming. But he'll he'll come around. I I can almost guarantee that he will you know see it, see that that is also necessary. Um, so. The rapid rise of global temperature continues at a mean rate of about 0.18 degrees Celsius per decade. The current annual temperature exceeds 1.25 Celsius. So we're in, we have a problem. We have surging um, growth of atmospheric methane, making it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to achieve targets like 1.5 or reduce um, CO2 between 350. So we need to have negative emissions carbon dioxide removal, leg three of the three-legged climate change bar stool that I talk about. We have to extract CO2 from the atmosphere. Um, there's many different ways to do that. Um, this is, there, there's, we basically, human survival is at stake. The survival of everybody on this planet requires that we have these negative emissions. So we need to put the might of military budgets around the world to achieving this as soon as possible. And I think that will happen. Um, that will happen at some point. So let's, when you're looking at a paper, look, read the introduction, look at the diagrams, um, you, you know, if your time is limited. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to go through the diagrams. So this is global emissions um, from 1850 to present day. The black line is total global emissions. This is the mature economies plus ships and aircraft, which usually get left out. And this is emerging economies. So you add the blue and the red and you get the black. This is a breakdown of the blue, the, emerge, the, the mature economies um, with uh, the USA um, is here and then you add, um, you know, rest of Europe, Eurasia is here, Russia is here, and so on. Canada and Australia are here. Um, and emissions of emerging economies, of course, China is leading the pack. India is coming up very strongly. Rest of Asia Pacific is the purple, and, and so on. Okay, so emissions are rapidly on the rise. So let's go to the next diagrams. Okay, so this is global surface temperature from 1880 to present day. Um, the actual data is the dots. They're connected by a dashed line. If you take a five-year running mean that slides along, you get the red line. This is what we have from 1970. If you expand this part of the graph, this is what we get here. And you can see what's happened um, this 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 year and last year we've gone way way up this is 1.3 degrees celsius above that will be above the 1880 to 1920 uh level so if you take the average of 1880 to 1920 you know we're that's the zero point where um you need to add to go back to 1750 you need to add a bit more bringing us basically uh, very, very close. You know, this is 1.3, add a bit more. You know, we're very, very close to 1.5. So we're there. You know, this is, we've, we haven't done anything on climate change, really. I mean, we're ramping up renewables like crazy now. You know, we are doing stuff, but we're not addressing the, um, you, you know, the, the, we're just not doing enough. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so... This is global surface temperature. If we go back, the, the last peak of the last ice age was 21,000 years ago. Okay, somewhere over here, um, it was cold. Then um, we had actually, <clears throat> okay, so this goes back through the Holocene, which started about here. Um, and this is the, temp the temperature anomaly. Okay, and what we get is Boom, modern era. So we're up at we're up in Eemian temperatures now. The Eemian was the last interglacial period, uh, about twenty, a hundred and thirty thousand years ago or so. The last interglacial, like I said, and these are different papers: C.H.S. Clark and Huebner's, Turney and Jones, T.J. the the range 
for what we thought the Eemian was like. Um, so we're getting up there. Now in the Eemian, sea levels were four to six meters higher. So if we, so this is a, the sea level rise that we'll get in, in the long term. And I argue in a video, can sea level rise seven meters by 2070, that it's gonna be in the short term. This is the forcing um, from different greenhouse gases. And in watts, the effective forcing in watts per square meter, CO2, 2.1, methane, um, slightly more than a third of that. Um, CFCs, and this includes all of the Montreal Protocol trace gases, um, not just CFCs and other trace gases, um, nitrous oxide, N2O, ozone, and these are all strongly forcing, add all these up, 2.9, 3.3, 3.5, positive, and we're getting about 1.2, shielding it, so that gives you a net of 2.5 watts per square meter. Um, as we phase out coal, this, this number um, will decrease, so the net will get warming as we re re reduce the, um, as we scale back industry, so we have to do it in the correct fashion. Um, this is a um, very unfortunate effect here. So let's keep going. The oceans are warming like crazy. Some of that, in fact, a lot of, you know, some of that heat came out in the El Ninos. El Ninos happen to release heat from the ocean, basically. It gets stored and stored and stored, and then it's released and then it gets stored and stored and stored, then it's released. And you get the El Nino, La Nina correction, um, you know, uh, variation. So the line here is going up. We're getting more and more heat being stored in the uh, oceans, and then it is, it is released subsequently to that. Okay, um, now we get, this is the change of CO2 parts per million per year. This is very important. So what you can see is, you can see that there is variation. So the peaks are the, in El Nino years. Strong El Nino in 81, 82. There was another one here in the late 80s. Um, another one here. This is a very powerful El Nino, only exceeded by the, by the most recent El Nino last year. And um, the CO2 level almost reached three parts per million that year and then it came back down. Now, in 2015, it was 3.05, and we're, we might be as high as 3.3, 3.4, 3.5 now. So we're going up higher and higher. This means that because we flattened um, uh, emissions, global anthropogenic emissions, it means that the earth sinks are reducing. Um, the oceans and the forests are pulling up less carbon because of the warming. So their ability to take carbon out of the air is decreasing, so we're spiking up. Now this is not more evidence of that that's the case because this is a correlation of CO2 with temperature. So if, as we're over here, the correlation is with CO2 first, this is with temperature first. So what this means is the peak, 51% correlation at eight months. So the CO2 growth rate is highly correlated with global temperature the CO2 change is lagging global temperature change by eight months. So it warms up, we get, we're changing the CO2 level from our emissions, it warms up, the earth is not absorbing as much, so, this, so then it's going up even more, and the lag is eight months. So because the CO2 is rise, the temperature is rising, the CO, the CO2 rises, causes the temperature rise, causes the more CO2 to come out, causes the temperature to rise even more with a lag of about eight months. So this is a very serious and this is a very alarming finding. Okay, so I don't want to um, run out of time here. So let me summarize. Um, basically, we're in a climate change emergency. The planet is screaming at us, hey humans, um, your time on this planet is limited. In fact, extremely limited as a species if you don't, uh, you know, take action, urgent action, declare a global emergency and address climate change. Thank you.